And and here we go. This is Flash at 20% off on 25 April 2019. For those of you who love the calendar, as I do. Uh, <laughs> Grim, uh, we got a little bit of a late start here. But uh, Grim came on. I'm having some kind of audio difficulties. But we don't know what it is at this moment. We just know that something go, something happens to fix it when Grim gets over here on the computer. Anyway, saying hey to Grim, thanks a lot for the help. And uh, the bots and bodies in the RLM chat. Some pretty interesting conversation tonight about energy and it's just funny you know we all got all these different ideas don't let it get to you that's the whole problem we all got different ideas anyway barman cowboy tech grimner moose girl miss kate brackets dc that's a good one Vinny. i didn't catch that one asmo chel sedoni well anti just popped up while I was reading, Echelon, I be Don C, Java Doctor underscore two, Rain, Rob Works, Rome's Vanna, Vanna White, Weather Dork, Woodman, Phantom, and Well Then, Beetle, Circle, Hello Honey, Colfax 101, Cyborg, Noodle, Me, Frumpy Two, Uberzilla, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kozu, Carl underscore Marks, the bot from hell, Ponder Gander, eh, Vinny, Ponsa, Sock Puppet, Salamo, Vane, E. White, Vinicus, and what? <laughs> There's the lineup of bots and bodies for your virtual entertainment this evening at the reallibertymedia.com chat where the greatest minds of the 20th century gather to try to figure out where we went fucking wrong anyway <laughs> they were uh they were having a a little banter about windmills electricity and this that and the other and and it all depends on where you live and who told you what see because there's a lot of stuff involved in all this shit at levels that not everybody is comfortable or aware of comfortable with maybe is a better way to put that but aware of on top of it there's shit there's so much shit you don't know i mean i know that from being me it's all kinds of shit i don't know and the more shit that i know the more i know i don't know shit <laughs> Got lots of opinions about stuff, you know, but don't get, you know, I don't get, let, get to my head and think I'm, uh, I know this and I know that it makes me a better person. Anyway, I did a thing called the control games for a while. I had a lot of fun doing that. And this week I'm going to switch up and I'm going to do a link on, uh, 20% off and I grabbed it from Salamo. But it's under his other name. His I don't know. It's under another name. <clears throat> and I wasn't sure who it belonged to. So, because I'm not real good with the still with the computer. <laughs> I had to ask Sir, hey, how do you figure out who wrote this? Is this the guy at the end of the thing? <laughs> it was like uh, my second childhood all over again. Anyway, so we got contact and you can hear. Hey, there's Vinny so you can hear. Good, good, good. But let me get into this. Uh, I want to read this blog. I guess it's a blog. From uh, It's called My Mind and the World. Don't follow me. Lead yourself. Now, the writer's name is at the end of the post. And I hope I don't follow it. I don't speak. It looks like French. Sylvain Lemero. Oh, well. I hope I didn't butcher it too badly, but that's Salamo in uh, the RLM chat room. So here goes <clears throat> nothing, as they say in Hollywood, land of the Jew. Uh, Thursday, July 14th, 2016. The arrogance 
of ignorance. <laughs> it really caught my attention too. So I try to read this without interjecting. So give me a minute to <laughs> gather my mind to accomplish the impossible. And away we go. How does a control mechanism based upon the minority population enact controls over the majority, fill them with fears, insecurities, and an inflated sense of importance, while pitting them against each other and offering the only viable solutions? This brings everything down to the personal level so that any conversation or attempt thereof is immediately considered as a threat, no matter how logical it may be. There are always the basic projections such as, you just want to be right, or you just want everyone to, <laughs> to think like you. Always an external enemy instead of actually listening to the words and logic which is attempted to be conveyed. Divide and conquer at its basis, for this conversation is about people of some backgrounds and similar experiences, which turn on each other at the drop of a hat over simple words, misunderstandings, and fear of having their ignorance called out. I have always said that a good start to healing the myriad of problems in this world is to understand and enact true communication. Ironic for the communication age. For this is a skill which has been, in my opinion, deliberately programmed out of us. Instead, we are all left with a reactionary base which throws around the how I feel meme about certain words to the point where if the word itself is not all that important, I will try to invoke it's the way you said it, justification. To kill the messenger instead of hearing the actual message is actually the norm today. I call this the arrogance of ignorance in today's world of smart this and intelligent that. There exists our, an inconceivable amount of ego and self judgment judgment, or rather the fear of being judged by others, and a projection of a wrongdoing from others. For if all our possessions are intelligent, where is there room for us? Question mark. There are a great many more individuals which have achieved a higher education these days than that of recent history, and with this it has brought about an air of superiority or entitlement and I hate to use that word for that is yet another program of intelligence which seems to block all common sense and the ability to learn beyond what is perceived to to I think uh, to be known uh, you might have double yeah check your spelling on that one uh, Salamo perhaps this is because the years and resources spent in achieving this higher mark from society is deemed as a point where I don't have to learn anymore. Look at my paper. I am smart. <laughs> Always having to prove themselves as better or at least knowledgeable in order to save face. Complete with projections based on fear that they may not be as informed as they believe. <laughs> This is the perfectly programmed ego with its programmed responses of indignation. Fear of losing a competition, albeit in the mind, and a childlike arrogance. They must protect their simple programmed inadequacies with outward projections towards one which listens and takes in information. Within the last month, I've been told twice by people I have ne never met that I was dangerous because I listen and don't say much to which I asked dangerous to whom only to be responded with to everyone <laughs> fear intelligence okay I'm not sure the punctuation is a little confusing I'm not good with it <laughs> so ignorance in these cases is an 
insult instead of simply what the word means. Can you figure it out? I'll give you a hint. Ignorance is something that one can build upon, a place where one can learn from. The only thing one proves from their defense of indignation of their ignorance is actually their stupidity. Once one believes they know it all, can one learn? An important question to understand when speaking of this subject, or perhaps when one believes that every offered opportunity for reflection is an insult, one solidifies their commitment to remaining ignorant. In my opinion, based upon my observations, the human race has devolved over time, and as a whole, humanity is as intelligent as a sack of hammers. <clears throat> now, how do you interpret that? Is that my fault or your own? Should I be held responsible for your interpretations? What did you perceive from that? <laughs> Are you immediately thinking that I have a hatred for humanity and wish to see them suffer and die? <laughs> Why would my mere observation be construed as hatred? Where does actual thought kick in and not reactive programming? This is what I think about. How mere questions and observations can be so misconstrued and twisted to fit anyone's defeatist and projectionary impulses. For one must defend oneself when one feels attacked, even if these are merely a programmed reaction in order to keep one from questioning and truly thinking outside the box. How many are doing that right now? Less than 5% of the total. Do you ever question yourself when you respond with a no? seemingly automatically like a child or when you say something simply to hear yourself talk even if it has no bearing on the conversation or if it just makes no sense do you ask yourself if you have even heard what was being conveyed or attempted do you ask yourself why such responses come out seemingly beyond your control did you give yourself the chance to learn something new I know I don't do it all the time, but I do question my reactions and responses to see if they are indeed programmed. Are these questions too offensive? Are they too deep? Perhaps I am just too negative. What other justifications and projections can you think of to not even hear what is being conveyed? How far will the ego go to protect its ignorance? It is very easy to question other motives to project outwardly rather than digging intro introspectively and having a real honest look at oneself. After all, who wants to look stupid? In reality, is that not simply a mind game which we play with ourselves? <laughs> Do we ever wonder why we torture ourselves in this way? Why we give so much credence to what others may think about us even when the things we think they think originate from our own minds why give power to others should we not keep some for ourselves in order to become stronger and better human beings should we not learn in order to perpetuate real human information forward to the next generation in order to evolve the year is 2016 and we are at war with everything including ourselves have we really advanced as a civilization or society? How can we, how can we, when as a whole we are neither civil nor social? Just some things to ponder as I share my mind with the four readers with a very high tolerance for those which think too much as I slowly go into the abyss some call madness. Did you catch my programmed response there? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was out of place. Well, that was from Salamo. But uh, I'm going to post it in the RLM. And that way, if you are interested, you can do it yourself. But I was reading it, and I can't do the chat room and read at the same time. I'm not, I'm not that good. I'm no Grimner. I only use one screen. <laughs> I thought a screen was something that went to a pipe until I found out about the internet and got straightened out by all the eggheads and nerds. 
No, a screen isn't something you put in a pipe. You watch your you know, movies and links on it. <laughs> I had no idea. So glad they enlightened me. Well, as a, I think that's that's the first personal blog I've read on the show so far. But it sure fits the control games theme I was on for the last, well, couple of weeks. I was given a whole lot of attention to uh, the control games, how they play us. And some people know it, and some people are, I think, my wife calls it hopeful. You know, that there's a way out of this mess if we only do this, or if we only do that. And no, there's no way out of this mess. You're, this is it. Oh, hey, thanks, Salamo. I appreciate that. It, I think you wrote it in uh, French and then translated it, correct? If you did, it, it, a little bit of it gave me a little... I wasn't prepared for it, the way that it was written. So I'm glad you liked it, because I thought I did about a half-assed job. But uh, your opinions are pretty strong. I would, I would say I agree with what you wrote. In fact, if anything... It would strike me that I think similarly to that and my writing, I might, I'm, I don't know if I'm that uh, critical of, of uh, the concepts, but I know I pick on government and society at large. You know, how we're being scammed by the very people that are telling us that we're not scamming you. Oh, no, no, no. Everything's great. You just need to go to work and, you know, pay your taxes. And just hang on, everything is going to be just freaking honky as soon as we get this wall up between Mexico and the U.S. Yeah, it was a, I guess I could do a little talking on that. I could be more particular. But you brought up a lot of good points on the, uh, on the, the blog. Arrogance, the arrogance of ignorance. And I did my best not to interrupt, you know, throw my shit in there but most of the stuff I was reading was uh, similar to the way I think because I've figured out that it's me doing this shit not you you ain't doing anything whatever you're doing uh, doesn't really have anything to do with me it does at a moment when I'm typing and then it's gone poof like magic you know uh, ah well okay then so I think you you um one paragraph you had the word to instead of be it was or i read it see i'm not reading it in my mind it didn't it made more sense to be a something than it did to to something so i'm i'm misunderstood uh, don't worry about it man uh, i write like a blind duck so don't you know i'm not criticizing your work at all i'm just not real good with grammar but I was giving it a go on the show, and uh, there's a whole list of other stuff that he's written, too. And there's uh, some information. There's some people that, you know, to check into, like, uh, he's got sites to know here. The Corbett Report, I recognize that. Charles Eisenstein, Michael Tellinger, Mark Passio, Max Egan, Eigen, or is it Egan, I think. David Icke, Waking Times, The Mind Unleashed, Things I Read Today. You know, there's a, and then there's a blog archive on there if you want to dig back and see what he's written about in the past. Now, I'm one of those egomaniacs that I can write my own stuff, so reading other people's work now is, uh, it's not necessary. I do it for entertainment, you know, or... I would say if I agree with the premise, then I'll continue reading it. But if it's just garbage about, you know, Trump's blowjob or what, I don't give a fuck about any of that. Or who's in the White House or who's in the, the Queen of Denmark's having tea with, you know, spiffy nollikins. I don't care. This shit is, we are invisible to these people that the population looks up to in adoration. They don't give a fuck about us. How could they? ride around and, you know, eat the best and drink the best and all this other shit. And there's people that don't have a pot to piss in because they've got so much. And that is the bottom line to that. 
Well, oh, people argue about capitalism and all this horse shit. And it, yeah, if it was true capitalism, we wouldn't be in the shit we're in. But they use the Federal Reserve Bank and the fractional, re, um, the fractional uh, banking practices. What the fuck? I lost my freaking mind for a minute here. <laughs> anyway, the money is not real. <laughs> we we argue about this occasionally in the room. Or I'll say something and just, eh, people don't care too much about it. But I don't I don't get how a group of people anywhere, any, any size of group, but people don't do these things anymore because <laughs> the government will fuck you up. And we're running out of rebels. They're going to... They're going to breed all the rebels out of school and you know, get rid of all the the naysayers and the kids that are odd that don't want to do what they're told and get rid of them or beat them until they submit. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know. You know, it's, it's one president. It's another president. Who cares? They're all the same scum in the end. How can you sit in a seat of position that important and and do the things they do to each other no i mean they send bombs and to kill other people civilian people millions and fucking millions of other people that got nothing to do with any of this you know they're just alive like me and you but they don't have the right skin color or speak the right language been born on the right bit of dirt Something has gone horribly wrong with the way that life has unfolded in the last, I don't know, since I've been around. Started out, it wasn't so bad. <clears throat> but I never did get a, the hang of grown-ups when I was young. I didn't care for grown-ups very much. And now that I am one, I can see why. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, we got some information about the money is not real. Yeah, well, I, I kind of, there's not much to say. About, I, I don't know what I haven't said over the years about the money's not real. Because this is a small group that would participate, you know, in listening to uh, the crazy stuff that comes off. <laughs> 20% off was, uh, hmm. that's the accusation. There's something wrong with me. Because I don't recognize your illusion as real. I don't. I play the game, you know, with the documents and the paperwork when I need to. And outside of that, it's it's invisible in my daily life. Talking about it on the radio or typing about it on the internet is not involving it in my daily life. It has no hold on me at all. You know? The only thing I'm concerned about is where Cirque wants to live. And she wants to live here. So this will do. And I'll make the best of it. But I'm not, I don't know. I'm just not like uh, so concerned with what other people think of me that I've got to speak Danish and all this horse shit. Nah, I go by the bare minimum. I'm cordial to people and they're nice back and we get along. Now, why, I don't see a lot of, well, there's only one guy that brags about uh, annoying people in public places on the RLM, and everybody else seems like level-headed, you know, to some point, you know, if they're going to do anything crazy, it's going to be typing some weird shit about spaceships on the internet, they're not going to go to Starbucks and, you know, start an argument with a liberal for entertainment, and see, that's the backbone of what I was getting out of Slamo's um, blog. Is we're so defeated as a collective that some people really believe it's true. You know, it's a mind game. It's it's ninety percent talk, ten percent physical. Most of the crap that I've been threatened with in my life, I think maybe one out of ten people came through and did something about what they said they were going to do in the first place. And the rest of them were just talking shit. Because I'm still here. And I can tell you, I've been told, I'm going to kill you more than one time. And here I sit. So, 
<laughs> Vinny's a rebel just for kicks. No, you can't fight a war for peace. That's insane. And what you do is you stop fucking lying to the public about what they're eating and drinking, what their money's made out of, you know, what has a value and what doesn't. Who's important and who's not? I mean, they've got hero worship down to a science where these celebrities, freaking celebrities, what the sports figures and musicians, the, this is this is what's important. <sighs> well, and then, you know, it distracts you while you're growing up, I suppose. Distracted the shit out of me, but I grew up in the city, so growing food, I learned how to do that when I was young. But never needed to apply it. Never. Um, I was more of a city dweller my the entirety than living out. I spent a little time roughing it, but not like Vinny. You know, not months on end. No, 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 no. That's just too much. And anyway, here I am at the end of life, six fifty nine years old, and I don't see. Uh, I don't see all this prepping and shit. Uh, the world's going to come to end prep and be prepared for the zombie apocalypse. Why? <laughs> if if that's the best that we can do as a fucking collective uh, and people expect me to scrounge through the rubble of some decimated wasteland to survive, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> Fuck that. No, 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 no. That. That's the exact opposite of what my life is. <clears throat> so, eh. Let's see what they're saying in the chat. Whoa. Oh, I'm Vinny and Grammar just thanking each other for stuff on the chat. Anyway, yeah, I was getting uh, sidetracked from the, from the link I was reading. But, Salamo... Oddly reminds me of uh, Salvinar from um, the Netherlands. Same mentality, you know. These people just don't know they're stupid, so they're stupid. It's not even their fault. And you can't tell them what's the point. You're going to just insult them. Uh, all right, if you use the word ignorant, it doesn't translate any... <laughs> it doesn't make much difference to another person. I've never had that. I've never been on the good side of that one. <laughs> when people insult me, hmm, I don't really take it personal. I don't really care. Hmm, uh, uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, if if they're not bad talking you in the world, then you're you're not making a sh you're not making a disturbance to something that doesn't belong where it is. You know, you're bucking heads. Well, buck heads, or shut the fuck up and be quiet. And sometimes I shut the fuck up and I'm quiet and I don't say anything. And other times I'm in there typing like a madman spitting on a screen. <laughs> but it's all, to me, it's all just uh, part of the illusion. Because we need to uh, be reminded of that horrid thing called reality in the physical world that we experience as a collective. And, you know, we may not break bread together, me and Grim, but... Grim's always there to help me out when I need help on the damn computer. And <laughs> sometimes I don't even know what he did. He didn't even know what he did. He did something and the microphone worked. I said, hey, maybe it's time for me to get a new mic. He says, no, nope, that can't be the problem. So he's probably going to sit with his big brain and think on that and figure out what's my problem. And if he doesn't, well, then who will? I can't do it, obviously. I'm not the computer nerd here. But anyway. A life based on secrets is built on lies. Exactly. That's a Salamo quote. Yeah, see, I see the same thing. I got a three-step program to unfuck the world. And I guarantee, hey, Donna Van Meter just popped in. Getting a big hello from Vinicus. And, uh, anyway. Um, three steps to unfuck the world. Stop lying to maybe I should add that to it to us. You know, the system if the system wasn't full of shit, we wouldn't be in the positions we're in now. If they're uncomfortable positions they're they come from society. 
Uh, hmm. And then people, they, they do things like they blame, oh, my wife's of this, or if you're female, my husband's of that, and this, that, and the other. But that's the point of the link was we're always looking at the other guy. Oh, look what you did. Oh, look what you're doing. Ah, blah, blah. But it's not about what they're doing. That's a distraction from what you're doing. <laughs> it's a catch-22. You can't, you can't come out of this happy. Hold on, let me finish this tea. I'll be right back. Ah, the perfect temperature. Anyway, uh, so uh, I don't know. So you quit lying to us, government, and then if we stopped killing each other, and then if you grew hemp like you knew what you were doing, inside of, I figure it to be about a six-month period, we could turn shit around just on those three principles alone. And people are talking all this crap about, oh, there's not enough food to feed the world and all. Yeah, there is. There. The problem is they, they overcrowd all the cities, overpopulate, make sure that there's a lot of tension and animosity and people are uncomfortable and they're hungry and they're, you know, too busy to be comfortable, too busy to have a good time, you know. Don't enjoy your fucking life. Don't you dare smoke that cannabis and be comfortable and watch TV and eat cookies, you know, because you're a threat to society if you do that. In all those years, people bought that horse shit, and here we are now, right? And you got some people that know the truth, and you still got these old people that, not old, old, but just people from the mindset of the evil devil's lettuce, it fuels the terrorists, shit like that. All these, All these insane stories that we've been fed from the very people that produce the shit for the population to use. And if you don't believe that's true, try getting away from the system and doing it yourself and see what happens. We are the ultimate captive audience because we're in, we're dependent on the very fucking shit that we're against. And there's no other choice. There's no opt-out, and there's no resources unless you take them through the government. And the government wants to install them right up your butt and listen to you cry at night while you cry yourself to sleep because, oh, the government's giving it to me up the ass. I don't like this anymore. But, no, they're just going to wait until you get used to it and beg them to give it to you. And that's where we're going to. Um <laughs> It's going to sound bad, but see, I don't, I don't see a future for uh, electricity the way that they're pitching it on the, with this, what's his name guy? Elon scum, Elon Musk. Just another stuffed shirt full of fucking relatives with a little bit of money dazzling the, you know, dazzling the poor people with his sleight of hand. It, it's, you know, Branson, Trump. How, how many of these morons do you people need before you're finally going to see that anybody that's like that in, in their delivery is, they're not doing anything for you. They're getting rich. Well, what do you get? Well, I don't have to pay for gas. <laughs> okay. No, you don't have to pay for gas. Now you've got to pay taxes for not buying gas. And now you have to pay a premium to get the electricity because they're going to get you eventually. This is what they do. These pricks are fucking greedy slobs. They're never going to fucking stop. And instead of starving them, the collective is going to pr make them produce. Give, it, give us the easy way. Oh, help, help. I, I don't want to do anything for myself. Give me an automatic something. You know, and, and it's like, wow, that fuels my despise for the, the car. I, oh, I just despise the damn cars now. But I'm sure there's plenty of reasons to have cars. I personally don't. There's not a lot of people that would take that stand because of where they live. 
you can't. Like Mary. Mary couldn't survive out there in Oakyville without a damn car. I'm not insane. I'm just saying that in the big cities, oh, wow, they've done so much damage with with the cities that I think it's beyond repair. I don't think you're going to ever fix the mess that we've made out of this. <laughs> I was talking the other night, you know, the, the Danes are, are such pussies. There, there's this Danish guy in Copenhagen that burns the Koran for entertainment to get the Arabs pissed off. And in the old area that me and Cirque lived in, Nobel. Hmm. And they made a big hoopla out of it. But I think some of the Arabs, you know, threw some bikes, taught, caught them on fire, a couple of trash cans. Now, it, all right, that's some serious stuff, but it's not like they had a gunfight. You know, some young people were just being insulted and acting like a bunch of morons over a freaking book, just like they're supposed to. Uh, I don't know. I guess being Jewish by this crap, I'm supposed to get all upset when people make, you know, Jew jokes or if they burn whatever the freaking religious book is. <laughs> That's how Jewish I am. I could care fucking less for religion. Hmm. Tell you one thing. This organized religion is, seems to be like the, one of the cornerstones to hold this, props up this bullshit that life that we live in. Because they've got so many billion people just fucked over and confused about... You're here now. This is what's important now. And they spend all their time worrying about where they're going. <laughs> Not a concern about what they do. They don't live a better life in any way, shape, or form. They still lie. They still cheat. They they do all the other stuff everybody else that doesn't read their little book does. They just read the book. Or they claim they read a book. Say a lot of fancy words. Well, maybe not fancy. Hmm. Common. Amongst their peers' words to identify themselves as a good standing member of that organization. And that usually ends badly. <laughs> I have a funny feeling that we weren't meant to actually live this crowded together like a bunch of ants on a hill. But I could be wrong. Hmm. Oh, Grimner is hacking and whacking at stuff. So he's looking for some advice from the Rednecks and the RealLibertyMedia.com chat. Where better to find an answer than RealLibertyMedia.com? If you don't know it, ask somebody in the Real Liberty Media. Just ask a question, any question. doesn't matter what it is. Somebody will know the answer to your question. I guarantee <laughs> Oh, and here's something I haven't done in a while. I was looking through the bit shoot, and I seen more than more people watched, uh, watch, listen to the the show than are on the RealLibertyMedia.com. So I figured there's a few people out there that are doing it besides the crew that I'm yakking with, you know, because I know these people a little bit more or less. Uh, if you feel generous and you want to help out um, reallibertymedia.com, don't feel free to send Grimnir, you know, a little extra pocket change so he can pay off, you know, Guido down at the corner and get a bag of weed. Go insane and eat Twinkies and drink chocolate milk. Because <laughs> that's the kind of crap you do when you're high. You lose all your standards and you just, you get the munchies. I used to get the munchies. I don't anymore. But when I did, it didn't matter if it wasn't bolted down. I was going to make a sandwich out of it or something. If it was packaged, I was going to unpackage it and shove it in my face and eat it until it was gone. But the last, I don't know, 20 or so years, no munchies. So I don't do that anymore, but I was remembering the good old days when I did. Anyway, thanks a lot for the the help that people do give too because we like real liberty media and it, it takes a few dollars to run it you know um just like anything else that uh, we're, we're trapped in this freaking game where nothing's free it's on credit and it's such a smooth sophisticated way to do credit that the participants overlook they they ignore and 
go beyond that. They don't even give a flying fuck that the money doesn't have a backing. They don't even understand what that means. But then again, I guess anything could collapse at any given freaking time anyway. But especially using the Federal Reserve Bank. Because fractional reserve banking is, is... I lost the words earlier. I was so tongue twisted I couldn't speak. But yeah, it's the, it's the cornerstone of our death financially. is fractional reserve banking and the Federal Reserve Bank. It's not federal... But it is a bank. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I think they reserve the right to not listen to you when you speak to them. Uh, don't see nothing changing. I've seen people come out, make links, lots of, you know, well, maybe not that many, 20, 25,000 people will look at it. And it's telling you that th what's going on in the Federal Reserve Bank and how illegal everything is. And I was a lawyer, blah, blah, blah. And I did that. And to me, even though they're telling, this is why I didn't get all jacked up over this Assange guy. <laughs> no matter what we expose to the public, no matter what we tell each other, what we believe, the things that take place are done by people that we're not involved with. So we end up with a product from these people that they've already decided to give us long ago and they're just pretending to, to pay attention to you today but they're not and that shows <clears throat> I get a chance to bring up my pet peeve with 5G that the danger levels of 5G are you know the safety levels what the government the federal this is everywhere too these fuckers are going to screw us all the the levels are so dangerous, but they're, uh, <laughs> the minimum is lethal. That's what I was trying to say. Now, that's according to the information that I found. And if you want to see a copy of it, go to Minds. I got a page on uh, Minds.com. And on my page, I flagged it. And it should be the second story on the on the page. And it's about the dangers of 5G. If you're interested or if you don't know, if you do know, then you know. If you don't know, oh. And I believe that no matter what we do or say to anybody at this point, we're just, we're being informative. We're, we're not going to stop anything. We're not trying to end, the, you know, to end anything. We're just discussing it. It's a really bad idea. And the people doing it, man, <laughs> What they're getting away with. It's just like when Monsanto fucked everybody in the um, corn. Soybean. Uh, what was it? Soy. They they did things legally right. So they... How do you explain this to anyone? They write laws to commit a crime. Whatever the crime they're planning to commit, their shit blows into your field... And now the crime is, is you've got their shit. How did you get it? The wind blew it over here. Well, we want it back. <laughs> huh? <laughs> but not the dirt. No, just the... <laughs> you can't do this. This is ridiculous. But we're doing it. And then by the time Monsanto got exposed, this is why I'm so... Eh, expose it away. Nothing's going to change. Monsanto sold out to Bear to change their name and then probably head off all that legal shit because now they're they're not Monsanto anymore. <laughs> I don't know how this all crap works on a legal thing, but it's just so sneaky and filthy and full of shit that it can't possibly be good no matter what it is. And they're having a big deal today because on the reallibertymedia.com chat because a whole bunch of us are amateur gardeners in the 21st century, people. That's right. If it grows in the ground, we'll plant it. If it grows out of the ground, we'll eat it. And what we don't, can't use, we'll give to somebody else. But that's the kind of folks we are at the reallibertymedia.com chat. So I'm joined, well, no, me and Sir have been doing a little bit. We did a little bit more last year. This year we're going to do a little bit more. I don't know. We'll see what happens. 
but we're not uh we're so connected to the society that we live in uh it's really not necessary we're not gonna great have any great savings it's just more like doing something is way better than doing nothing and just complaining about everything oh it's so this no oh, it's so that well what are you doing about that and my little contributions are shit like walking or helping circ plant or garden or whatever you want to call that little bit of yard work stuff it's not that big a deal but it makes her smile so i do it now this year she might want to go a little bigger and plan a little bit more she wants strawberries and she wants this she grew a shitload of cucumbers off of three plants or was it two might have been two a whole bunch of them anyway and they were good they're a lot bigger than i expected them to grow and um uh, Apparently the soil that we're living on, it's supposed to be bad. And I added stuff to the soil where we planted the stuff that we ate. And apparently we haven't grown any extra appendages or anything. So I don't think the cucumbers were t tainted. But they might have been. <coughs> and I might just be so tough at this age that there's not much left that they can do to me that my body can't handle. <laughs> you know. To this to this point, I'm not I'm not in wearing down, decaying. Um, well, I am, but man, maybe it's more mental than physical. I haven't quite decided on that one, but I don't feel old and crotchety at this point in life. But I'm sure that that will come if I live long enough. So I guess a lot of the stuff I've learned on the internet is to check out the source of what you're getting and beside the source of what you're getting what does it do to you what you intake and there's some things i'm going to do and then there's some things that i'm not going to do um, for example uh, i'm not going to give up my smoking i'm a smoker it's bad for you yeah 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 but if it gives me any trouble physically i i consider stopping but not the weed well maybe i don't know i don't think i'd quit smoking the weed that would be a little tough that would be like cutting off a finger go hey i don't want you to cut off my finger i've been doing this since i was a kid you know well, i'm kind of used to it now um hmm. anyway they're digging and chopping and um doing all kinds of gardening, Grimner's even on it. And he was saying he doesn't have a fence to separate his property from the neighbors. So predators, if you have a successful garden, sadly, what happened, we had uh, birds loved our strawberries before, you know, them. then by the time they got them, Cirque just said, ah, fuck it. But next, the next crop we go grow of, of the strawberries, we're going to grow them for us and stop giving them to the birds. But my wife's a pushover for charities, you know. What do you expect? It's a bird. It lives outside. You know, it doesn't have a home. So it wants a strawberry. What are you going to do? Shoot it? And then we don't have any weapons, so with what? I have to go out there with a baseball bat, try to kill a bird for stealing a strawberry probably break my leg trying in the first place because birds <laughs> so i saved myself a whole shitload of trouble and physical recovery by controlling my anger in the first place not getting pissed off seriously about the stupid little shit in life that goes wrong <coughs> now some people deal with it better than others i would say just out of common sense me, I don't know. It's all a matter of how you interpret what I do, and you don't, you don't got, you don't have got. Wow, you haven't got much to work with from a few lines of text on a computer screen. The difference, I would say, would be the the difference between a few lines of text and that blog that Slamo wrote. Now. You put yourself out there like that, because that could be interpreted so many different ways, depending on the reader. Because if you're, you know, if you're guilty of something, and somebody points a finger at you and says, "Hey, 
the first thing you're going to do is get defensive. And I didn't do that. What are you talking about? Whether you did it or not most of the time, because most people don't admit to their fucking mistakes. They blame somebody else for what they themselves did. Oh, like today it was, uh, I don't know, in the chat we were, somebody was talking about Agent Orange in Vietnam. Like any of us are, I'm old enough to remember the days, but I wasn't old enough to do anything about it when they were happening. I was a little kid, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That was until, what, 4, 74, 75 they pulled out. So I basically grew up with Vietnam as a war. And all the goodies that came along with it. And how life changed because of that particular war. We had freedom coming up in the 70s. But Richard Nixon, in his vast wisdom, decided to put an end to that shit. He wasn't going to have any free thinkers running around in his country, by God. And so he put an end to that. Shot a few kids at Kent State. And used the National Guard to do it. A fucking college campus. Protesters. Unarmed protesters. And they shot them dead. Hmm. So. What does that tell tell you when you're, you know, as you're growing up? The government shot people for, for being anti-war. Uh-oh. <laughs> wow. So. I don't know. I was never for war, against war, or any. I don't really. I think it's just uh, business. It's a business. <laughs> Everybody in the squirrels. <laughs> we don't seem to have squirrels here. So we got plenty of birds. So. Yeah, I don't, see, I'm lucky. Wherever I go, I get the atmosphere that I, I that pleases me at the time. And just this place is good. And there's no squirrels. Ha! So I can brag about my lack of squirrels, and you can't infest me with squirrels to get me back. Ha 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 ha! Anyway, hey Donna, I was just being a smartass. Hmm. But what was the name of that? Let me see. I have a terrible memory for in, you know instant recall. No, it's all gone like that. The arrogance of ignorance. Yeah, I think I opened the show by saying out loud and personally that I don't think I know shit. No, 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 no. I agree with people about certain topics and I can assume that I can look at something and make the most of uh, sense out of what I see and come to a decision. And I know it for me. Well, I don't know it for you. I, you don't you don't have to agree with me. It doesn't it's not going to change anything. If what would we have to do to actually physically change something would be not spend money on certain things, and that's how you do it. But we're all hooked on our shit, so we can't. We're like a bunch of junkies fighting over a candy bar. You know, there's no way out of this mess we're in, and the mess just um seems to get worse as we progress through it instead of better. I was talking to Vinny the other day about it, and he wants to do a ride-along with his um, friend that became a cop, or acquaintance. I don't know if he's a friend. He's a buddy. He knows the guy. And he wants to do a, uh, uh, an audit of his day on the yeah, in the car, see how he treats people, and confront him about why they jacked this girl up with the pink hair and the nose ring. Well, that's because that's what people do, Vinny. When, when you don't conform to the norm, well, you bring. We already know that when you're doing it. I do it, physically do it. So I, I know how that game plays. And today I shave today for the, you know, like I shave like twice a year or something now. And uh, mm. <laughs> cause I'm not cutting my hair, but I'll shave my face once in a while. But the hair's not going any fucking where till I'm bald, and then I'll shave it in my head when I'm bald, old bald guy. Get some flames tattooed on the sides, maybe a big piercing of a horn. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm not gonna do any of that. But uh, I'm prepared for. Hey, I'm gonna go bald and be all you know, 
two hairs, <laughs> two hairs, two strands of hair sticking out of one part of my balding head. That's going to be okay. I'll still be me, but I won't look the same. But will I, I still, just like now, I didn't look like this 40 years ago, but I'm, I'm still the same. <laughs> the, uh, the life hasn't um, changed the way that I interact with people. I've gotten along with people for the most part. And the few people I didn't get along with, nothing, I mean, nothing life-threatening ever came of any of that. It was just, eh, I don't get along with you. I'll just fuck this. And I'm the guy that just doesn't care enough to, I'm not going to fight for dirt. There's so much dirt. Hey, speaking of so much dirt, Woody posted uh, a good morning to all of us picture with a video of his backyard <laughs> where he lives and it is huge it looked like donald trump's hair it was so big it was like everywhere it was very trumpy <laughs> just wanted to mention that because it was huge man that was one hell of a backyard of course that's kind of how i look at the world and i used to joke about it when i was uh traveling around and say hey Welcome to my living room, and we'd be sitting at you know at a fire. This is where I'm. This is mine, you know, and it's yours too, cause it's it. That's the whole point of this shit. And somewhere along the way, they figured out how to control us. <laughs> it's so great. And I'm not talking about just the the usual typical religion, politics, uh, education kind of thing. They've gone beyond all that. They they fuck with the water. They prove this time after freaking time after time. Fluoridated water. To this day, 40 states in the United States. And I've read as much to uh as much as 75% of the population. So it depends on the report you're reading and this is what I mean about we don't get the truth. How can you get two different stories if you're telling the truth? It should be one fucking story. Just like the news does. <laughs> right? Because if you watch it in Chicago, you might as well be watching it in L.A. Because they're saying the same exact thing, almost word for word. That's not even what I'm talking about. What I mean is, if you weren't lying, it wouldn't matter how you told the truth. It would just matter that you told the truth. And I'm not talking about all this crap about, oh, honey, do these pants make my ass look big bullshit. I mean, the lies that brought us fluoride in the water or the 60 or the 50 cycle generator that creates this hellacious waste and is fucking up our electricity. The delivery of the fucking electricity makes us ill. <laughs> of course, we don't know that because... This is our normal. We we were born in it, and it's progressively gotten worse as we've come along and aged. Ask Grim. Grim's my age. He knows. Ask Mary. She's the same. And the three of us seem to look at this world and agree on the principles of what operates it, and they're not good. And the people that support the governments and the wars and all this stupid shit, it's ignorance. It's like what Slamma was writing about, you know. If your can if your um, indoctrination is beaten into you so deeply that you feel uh, entitled and special, then you run around talking about being at war with other countries when it has fuck all to do with you. I don't care if if you're in the freaking military, you're just a tool. And if you don't know that then you think you must have a huge ego. I don't, I don't understand much of what I, uh, the negative side. I can only assume it because I don't carry it. And I look on these other folks that do the insane shit that they do, and I can only judge that based on me. So, I spend a lot of time just shaking my head, wondering, you know. How did I get so lucky to miss all this crap that everybody else seems to be going through? I'm not sure. And, well, then you go, well, but you got crap where you're at. Yeah, and it's the same, the core of it. It's the whole point. 
the core of it is the fucking water and the electric and the food. Now, the th those three things are not as uh, dangerous here as they are where I'm from. Or where I was in Scotland, the same thing. It was more a natural, out-of-the-way place, very small population. You can't attack those places and kill off the population. That's not going to work. Then you're going to have an empty island. So, where do you go to kill people? Hmm. Where do the civilized go to kill? I'm not sure. But, if I read correctly, I think the United States military and their agents, France, Germany, the UK, and whoever else got involved. I think Denmark sent a freaking submarine to... Uh, <laughs> to be involved, that was their involvement. They sent a submarine <coughs> to a landlocked freaking oil war, so that you know they could prove their their support, but be as useless as tits on bacon. When you know, because you can't really do anything from a submarine that's not gonna fuck everybody. So <laughs> they, I guess, they left it to the rest of them, and I think the kill list was like two million civilians died and <laughs> and this is what people are they're happy about that because those are our enemies whoever we i'm not no 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 i'm not even involved in any of this shit you guys can have it have all of it and i do live that life um i don't the only politics i ever talk or type is all on the internet there's nothing to, no, no reality to it in my physical daily life. Maybe a comment to circ about something we read on the internet or a story, but it's not the core of our marriage, I'll tell you that. Uh, me and Cirque just get along, and that's worth staying over. Uh, well, I mean, if you, if something's good, why why would you not be there? And if something's bad, why do you not have the balls to fix it or leave it or burn it or beat it or something? Why do, Why would people willingly subject themselves to misery is beyond my, you know, I'm too selfish for that. So, but fortune's with me. I married somebody that could put up with me. <laughs> and if you listen to the show, I'm sure you can figure I'm not the easiest person to get along with. Uh, this isn't a popularity contest. I'm, I'm not doing the, the radio because I think there's so much. I've got so much to teach people. In it. No, the reason I do the radio is there really are people out there that agree with what me and Rob and Vinny and let me look at the Van Meter and Frumpy and I'm just looking at the page, what's in front of me. And even Gooberzilla, to a point, sees the same way. Not everything, but the core of the whole thing. And we get along good enough. You know, uh, I don't know what you can expect from people. They're going to type shit. They're going to be mean. Or they're going to say things you don't like. Or they're going to say things that you think are dumb. Whatever the fuck your thing is about what you read. I have a hard time always remembering it's me reading it, so I make whatever I want out of it, just like anybody else can. But I still have that sensitive side to me that I don't enjoy it when people are constantly um, being verbally destructive. You know, what uh, What the story was about, verbally ignorant, so they 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 think they're right because of what they were told not because of what's really happening they've been told shit and they just seem to repeat the words and if you look around uh your own personal world i don't know i have a i have a great time where i'm at so i can't but if i lived in copenhagen i'd be bitching like a like a nut job i wouldn't be happy there i know that i think sir figured that out too when i brought it up so we're where we wanted to go. Go figure. You know, and uh and it's just sad that the game is so uh, hmm, so corrupt and so controlled and so devious that they've locked us down and, and I got 
I must have got out just uh, like under the at the last few months of whatever freedom there was left in the states because I don't remember anybody giving me any big deal about you know going to Scotland or being there for the time I was there. Then I got married here, so you know legal schmiegel beagle crap and all that. But we did that, you know, legally so that the the there wouldn't be uh, threats to our relationship, you know. If we're going to be together, it's it's us that's going to decide, not the government. And the government is sneaky. And the one I come from, they fuck with your children in public school. I know this because I had a child in public school, my kid. And was uh, responsible for a couple others, but but mine was involved in this. So, you know, when it's you, then it's different, and you see things more clearly. Excuse me. Woo! Had a frog in my throat. But you see things more clearly when it happens to you than when somebody else tells you a story, like I'm doing. Um, like when I go off about the blood medicine blood pressure medication scam that I think it is. And now there's Dr. Bergman that will back it up with video link. He's a doctor. Tell you the same damn thing I'll tell you. The difference is, as I learned it from, how did I learn it really? Uh, when they were testing me for the damn pills, for they wanted to give me a blood test at the in Scotland to uh, to check my liver for damage from taking the pills that I was there to re uh, what do you refill and I went wait a minute uh, what because I hadn't I hadn't known that I hadn't been on them that long to where this event had taken place where they were testing me for uh, kidney damage and I went hey fuck this if that's the case I would rather be ill with the illness than be dependent on these freaking pills that are definitely cause me damage. They're gonna measure it on one of their little scales, and of course the you know what's lethal is legal. <laughs> they just write it down on. Hey, look, here's our chart. Da da da. There you go. What the fuck? And anyway, so no. And I thought. Yeah, I truly rather fight the illness, whatever the illness is supposed to be, than suffer from kidney damage so i tossed the pills i told the girl i said i gotta go to the bathroom i'll be right back and i left never went back tossed the shit that um, i had whatever the fuck empty bottles just got rid of all of it never went back to the doctor and here i am that was in uh, 2011 i think it was november and here i am what seven and a half years later still breathing still walking still kicking Still talking shit about the government and the popo and the idiots and the adults and the weirdos. But I don't think um, people are losers. I think they're misled, you know. They're they're taught wrong ideas. They're, the shit, because I was one of them, I think, at some point. My father was a maniac. And I didn't like people very much. And, uh. Over the years, I've softened, but man, nah, whatever you're indoctrinated with still stays with you somehow. And for me, if I was to let that control my outlook on other people, I would just despise everyone. I wouldn't be married to Circle. Why would Cirque be interested in somebody that was mean in the first? You see, so the the, the little bit of mean I I do have in me, I use it on the internet. Type a little bit. Oh, you know, some, 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 blah, blah, blah. Nonsense. Doesn't mean anything. But, like the story said that I was reading earlier, that Slamo wrote, it's all about your indoctrination, how you are, if you're willing to look at your side of whatever's happening or not. It takes two. That, I'll, I'll give you that much. We don't seem to do much in life alone, you know, Though that doesn't involve other people, the, the, there's no interaction. Nothing can come from that. You have to participate. Well, 
how you see that participation is, that's really deep shit. But we've got instant everything, and we've got internet, and we're so fucking smart. We know everything. That's why the public is still willing to fight wars over socialism. <laughs> Rob Works has tried to explain it to Hansel a hundred times. You're a socialist. That's what you do. That's what socialism is. Is this crap that you support. But he doesn't get that. He he hears that uh, that foreign word. You know, that means far away. What those guys did to those other people. He doesn't see what the United States is. It's a socialist country. Just like every other fucking country on the planet. It's all and now they want they these idiots, they want to interconnect all of it. Wow. It's just like this crazy fucking Denmark and they're gonna build a fucking island and they're gonna put wind and solar and all this shit on it instead of just growing hemp. They got fucking Freetown right here to prove hash is not the enemy. <laughs> Kill the fucking hash laws. Stop the prohibition. You got enough land here. Grow some fucking hemp for a while. <laughs> You'll see a change. But we're we're indoctrinated with all these misgivings and all these bad ideas, and we're taught to hate things that are good for us, like cannabis and hemp, and love rayon and oil. <laughs> Two, I mean, you know, wait. The more wasteful and dirty and like cotton cotton is the most filthy fucking processing you can do to come out with such a great product the filth involved in getting it from a cotton bowl to a piece of cloth is filthy but like i've said before levi strauss is attacking the pants market with new hemp pants I saw one link like a month ago or something. I've mentioned it like two or three times. People don't care. That's The apathy is so high. They, they don't even probably know what hemp is. Probably don't have the ability to understand the difference between cotton and hemp. <laughs> it's it's so pitiful the way I'm... I mean, it must sound horrid too, but I've seen many, many links of people being interviewed about this, that, and the other. And a lot of the people that I saw didn't have the ability to put a sentence together and answer the question. So, wow. And most of that was off the college campuses. These college people are horrid. A bunch of entitled babies that want, want to... They want to be violent to you, but they don't want you to be violent back. No, 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 that's not how that works some kind of weird like they're victims of you so they're gonna they want to be violent with you but you're supposed to take it I, that's the mentality i i receive off the information that i get this entitled crowd and you know like the warmongers always blaming somebody else oh congress did this and no man that, it's gone it's so far beyond they had to raise a a they had to raise a society of people that are capable of hating people by command. You have to be told, this is your enemy. Wow. Okay. Yes, sir. That's my enemy. Now go kill him. What? No. Well, even Muhammad Ali said, well, I'll beat him up, but I'm not going to kill anybody. No, thank you. He did time in prison for it, I think. Or, well, he probably didn't do... I don't even remember now, but it was like 1968. They tried to get him to go to Vietnam. He said, fuck you. That much I, I'm familiar with. The rest of it, he might have gone gone to jail. He might not have. But we have the interwebs to prove or disprove any damn thing I say on 20% off. No matter what. Uh-oh. Oh. Anyone here that can trace a VIN number for a 1978 Toyota? Beetle is looking for some help on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Throw a name on there and go give him some help. 
If you have access to the Department of Motor Vehicles, please contact Beetle at reallibertymedia.com immediately. The beauty of the internet, though, is we got instant every damn thing. And where the trap is all laid is the delivery of the power to use the stuff. And it's controlled on... Cirque, was, Cirque knows her shit about the... <laughs> About the stuff she talks about, let me let me just say that she works with this people that, well, she works with a lot of people involved in a lot of crap, so she has a lot of input, and uh, there's ways to explain this stuff, but they're so comp complex, complicated, layered. If you don't know this, then telling you that doesn't do you any good. So you have to start from the very beginning, the very foundation to make sense of all this wavelength, vibration, and it's really simple. I mean, it's not, the, I don't think the basics of it are that hard to follow. We're electricity, we vibrate, we, we, uh, we run on wavelengths, but we don't know what they are. I mean, I I can't sit here and, and define it to you in specific words. I have a, a mental understanding. That's the best I can do. I know it's true to me. It works for me, the way these things happen. Uh, the ability to see or to touch a table. All these things are all in my head. They're what I believe them to be, not you. So, hmm. There's so much more to this life than I can explain. But I'm not so desperate that I'm willing to take the word of another person to define what life is and what life is not. I think that I can do that all by myself. I think a lot of other people could give a rat's ass. And that's, that's the division. And the apathy is really, really high. I think it's about 90% probably. And then they get these little you know, splinter things like this. Uh, I think Soros paid for that yellow vest crap. I thought I was going to like it at first, but I don't know. It Anything that, uh, anything that people are willing to join in some, you know, and make a public spectacle of, it usually ends in something horrid. So no good's going to come from that. And that's I think that's the point of what society has proven to us, is we're so ignorant as a collective that we resort to violence and have to be herded like dogs and beaten by bullies. And they call it law enforcement. But if you gather in a big enough group and do something that irritates the status quo, the government, the society, whatever the fuck it is, well, you're going to bring rain and they're going to send their damn thugs out to, you know, spray you with water tanks and beat you with clubs, throw, you know, what are those bombs at you, tear gas. And this shit's real. These people here in Denmark did, had their share, fair share of, uh, what do you call them, riots and political problems in the 90s. And the people just kept staying at, you know, holding their ground. <laughs> it's funny. I've been in Copenhagen where there's there's buildings that have decayed, but they don't dare touch nothing <laughs> because the people will get pissed off if they remove what's still there. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was kind of interesting because uh, it's, it's a very small town <coughs> and right in the middle of uh, Nobel where me and Cirk lived there was a big cemetery it took like 10 or 15 minutes to walk from one side of it to the other I can't remember maybe 15 but it was you know about a square yeah, maybe maybe fifteen. It might have been a mile a mile um, long and a half a mile wide. And uh, right in the middle, of the there's stores all around this whole freaking cemetery, and it's so weird. It doesn't really look like a cemetery, but it was. And I got I don't know. We didn't go running through there at night naked or anything, but we I would meet her and we'd walk through there during the spring, 
Everybody walked through there during the spring. but And it was a shortcut from one side of the town to the other, too, as well. But they had gates, and they tried to uh, dissuade people from using it as, as a shortcut. I don't know why, but it seemed that way. The design of it was weird. But, of course, it was originally... Uh, a graveyard and it was enclosed i don't know if that fourth side was it was kind of had walls like happenstance but the other three sides were more um, organized but right in the middle of freaking town there's a cemetery i thought it was strange and i and i don't think of it very often anymore so i got kind of wandered off remembering walking through that place now i'm back to the show <laughs> 20 percent off and tonight we've been doing a podcast about Salamo's Link, basically, and a few outside ideas that I thought were uh, connected, you know, but The Arrogance of Ignorance, it was the title of his blog, and I guess that's kind of a, hmm, makes sense to me, there's not too many ways to put that, but they go hand in hand, and when somebody's ignorant, the one that doesn't know it is ignorant, that's what that means, they they don't have the ability or the interest or the something to you know pursue beyond where they're at. They're happy where they are. That's what they call that. You know, um, like me, I'm happy physically where I'm at. So I see no reason to pursue or open or look or follow through on anything else because I'm doing what I want to do. And that's it's a mental. Uh, comparison i think that fits i'm hell-bent on doing what i want well so is the guy and that's for all the shit that i'm against but ignorance the inability to go forward and progress into a another stage another part of the game because yeah you can get stuck in one part of the game there's lots of ways to play or not play this so Mm, I don't think there's an advantage to um, staying stuck on... I call it stuck on stupid. You know, Like, if I was to deny that me and Cirque rent this freaking house from a banking institution, I would be out of my freaking mind, according to my wife. And so would she, according to me. So, wow, what fortune that was. Because I've lived with a um, few people before with houses and that was the um that was the end all be all of relationships is the the ownership and mine and this that and the other and people want to they want to claim things that aren't true and when you try to explain it to them it just pisses them off they get mad and then when you prove it to them then it's over if you have to go as far as physically proving somebody doesn't own the property they they live in it's mind shattering it will make people avoid you for the rest of your life and i think uh there's a few people on the rlm that have personally investigated the legalities of owning property and then they find out well you own the house but you don't own the dirt <laughs> no 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 that that somebody else owns that you're you own the house though the house is yours but we own everything else so if you want to do anything on this dirt guess what you got to come ask us well wait a minute didn't you say it was my house well yeah and but it's my dirt so anything you do on my dirt seems to supersede anything that you want to do in your house <laughs> Now, this is, okay, back to the controls, but the controls of life, how they got us, they got us all trapped and trained and do this and do that and comply and conform and be this. And after a while, I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just my age, but after a while, I just found it useless to uh, take that seriously. That lifestyle, you know, that behavior. You know, it's amusing in the chat room for 20 minutes or a half hour. But after that, it gets old and I go play uh, gummy drops or work on something around the house. And 
come back 20 minutes later and make some crack. But uh, I don't know. I can't see. Me. Ah, thanks. I got Elixir. Ooh, look at this. I got a 20% off Elixir from the wife. Uh-oh. She's giving me privacy in the talking room. Because sometimes my dog Hannah goes nuts and decides to say hello to Grimner. <laughs> anyway, let's see what's going on. We've got, uh, and will then, Gooberzilla and Anti and the bottom of the chat having a little discussion about this, that, and the other. While I'm ranting on about the controls of the world and I guess the arrogance of ignorance. Now, I could get accused of having that very thing by people who oppose my side of this argument because, well, you're just a pot smoking dope fiend and you don't have any clue of what's really going on. But I live in a home with a wife and a dog and a cat and. <laughs> We've been together for five, we'll be married, it'll be married five years in May. I was thinking about that, it's almost the anniversary time, my God. Where does it go? Poof, it's gone. You know. So the best you can do is to have good memories of the life that you're living in and be comfortable and happy with what you're doing. And in that idea is not really given a lot of, well, it sounds gay when you talk like that. I'm sure it does. But, you know, what's... I'm a hedonist, I think. I live for the uh, pleasure of life. You know, I don't live for the suffering and the torment and the misery. Fuck all that shit. Man, any, anybody out there looking for some of that, I don't have any. I dumped that shit a long time ago. Because I convinced myself, in my mind, that it's a choice that I make. So, there you go. If it's a choice that I can make, all I have to do is know I can choose it. <laughs> and remember when I'm pissed off at something in the real world, to not let that thing that's upsetting me control me. What the fuck? It's it's not you, it's them. You're, you're being you, and you're living your life. So, hmm, outside influences is a choice. And... That probably sounds as wackadoodle as wackadoodle gets, but that's pretty much what I've, um, I live with it, Cirque lives with it, she don't seem to mind, um, but here we are in 20 and 19, and we're still living on borrowed money, borrowed money, which means <laughs> that your government is paying for the money that you use to use to buy stuff and that opens such a can of worms <laughs> you would think that there's a lot of folks that and i'm sure like people know that tax taxation is theft and th the reason it's theft is because they take it by force <laughs> at the end of a gun or threat of imprisonment <laughs> one lap huh? uh, uh, hey cowboy tech it's always nice to see cowboy tech pop up puts up the good links about the important stuff that's going on and occasionally a good meme about something goofy so cowboys balanced i get a kick out of cowboy tech and i'm not a big people person i don't you know, i don't get along with too many people but you know we do the best we can do in life. And then, of course, we see ourselves from our own perspective, <laughs> not other people. So that's why yeah, every now and again when Cowboy Tech does pop up, uh, I like to say hey, because I like what he does. And how would anybody know that you like what they do if you don't fucking tell them? <laughs> and uh, I put pictures up on the other site, the realliberty.org. I should do more of it. But, you know, like I say, I, I don't know. I'm not all about the crowds. I'm about the quality. And I haven't really gotten any new pictures in that I really thought were exotic enough for, you know, to interest my fellow Americans back in the homestead. You know, because they're probably expecting to see Danish crap in Denmark and whatnot. And that, uh... Well, I've put up a few pictures of Hannah and the cat because they're my uh, 
they're my house pets. You know, they they live with me. Well, they think I live with them though. <laughs> I had them both sitting next to me today. I had to take pictures to show Cirque because it was so. Hannah was sitting in, in Circle's chair, and there's a, a chair between us for for Hannah to usually sit on. She likes to sit with us, and the cat took it over. So the cat was hogging it all up, and and Hannah had to go sit on Cirque's chair, and she was like pouting and having a, putting her back to me. <laughs> hey, it's cool, but uh, life, you know. So I mean, I can't get mad about stupid things. You you'd be an animal. Ah, I was taking the. Uh, the dog to go meet Cirque because I meet Cirque and I go off to go get some stuff at the grocery it's right by the train and then she takes the dog and they like to take these long walks and go all over the freaking area where she broke her fingers <laughs> so uh, I was on my way to meet her and there's this neighbor we have that has two little dogs and we pass we crossed on the bike path and her dog was very aggressive and Hannah wanted to fight it I had to pull her back <laughs> it was funny and the the woman apologized to me for her dog being aggressive because she knew because everybody loves hannah but this little dog is a <laughs> it's a monster so i don't know why that came to mind and why i wanted to mention it but i think the dog reflects the mental the mental state of the human it lives with or the living conditions the dog has you know and you can treat a dog good feeding it and uh, watering it and that kind of thing. But if you're not nice to the dog, how is the dog going to behave? <laughs> See? Because what is dog? A dog's whole life is pet me, rub me, feed me. You know, all you got to do to make a dog happy is give him food and water and a few treats here and there. And that bone, they fucking love you forever. But uh, if you've got a dog that's angry and of attacks what's that about <laughs> what what my dog has a mental condition probably needs some therapy or some drugs because you know drugs cure everything uh oh who's getting a measles shot when oh what is the price anti's asking if anybody knows what the price of uh, one of them their flu shots is and then he says, I mean measly, measles shots. So he messed up. He meant he meant measles shots. Well, it doesn't matter. Look at the... Here, let me interject this. This is the way I understand what an inoculation actually does. Okay. Now, you're, you're not sick with anything. Okay. But they're going to inject you with a dose of measles so that your body can build an immunity to the measles it got injected with instead of letting nature take its course and give you the measles and then you get over them in like 10 days when you're a kid it's not a it's not an adult disease it's a child's it's a child's disease and what they did what some kid probably got run over by a bus but he had the measles or she and they said see the kid died of measles <laughs> Yeah, in a bus rack. Yeah, that's how that works. Ask Mary sometime. Listen to Grammy's Rocket Chair if you ever want to get linked. That woman reads the best. <laughs> Sometimes they're funny. But she reads the best serious stuff, too, as well as Cowboy. I don't want to take your crown away. Uh, Grammy's up there with my favorite posters. And uh, Grimm's more of the music guy. <clears throat> but uh, Grimm and Moose do music. Mary and Cowboy, they do the damn serious shit that if you look at it and pay attention and actually give it a chance, you'll see what we see. Mm. Now, does that go with being right or wrong about something? I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to assume that, but the, see, from talking, you know, from... Speaking to other people, that's pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to feel led somewhere, push somewhere. And I'm trying to do the opposite of that by putting it on me. You know, this is how I see shit. You you don't have to see it this way to get along with me. It helps. Uh, if you don't see it this way, chances are we're not going to get along. 
that's the nature of being uh, an out of the box thinker you know being against the standing society the way things run the deceit and the, and the lies Oy. all the horrible shit that these fucking people do to us makes us treat each other bad and when you try to explain that to somebody else they sometimes don't seem to get the point they complicate it with the outside uh, things that don't apply like war war is it's a word water is something you drink you know politics is a word but food is something you eat well somehow or another the government got control of the food and water and the power and the electricity these fuckers are poisoning us every possible way they can think of they're going to put the 5G in in a few years too that's going to really fuck everything bad I can uh I'm not looking forward to that. I think if they do it here I'm gonna try try to talk circuit and move in somewhere else. Go live on a in a on a beach somewhere with a dog. I'm not hot on this new uh all this technology shit. They're doing stuff to it's like um when they first de- developed the the combustion engine The damn thing didn't do 225 miles an hour. But, you know what you got now? You got cars that can do 200 and something miles an hour around a circle in a a racetrack. (laughs) I've seen it with my own eyes. Zoom, zoom. You just got to drive, you know. They're going around the world to the left or something. But, uh. But when they started, what I guess the point I'm trying to make is in the beginning, when this first engine was designed and the guy thought, "Ah, I wonder how we can make one of these. And then they made it. Okay, and now we're going to need something to make it run. How did they end up with oil? You know, who in the fuck thought of getting gas from oil to run an engine when Henry Ford already proved that hemp worked just fine and it didn't pollute but here we are now henry ford thought of this people maybe he was led that way whatever but i've seen the finished product of the hemp mobile and they made one another one in 1943 from bumper to bumper hemp fueled and made from so hmm. but now the big thing is electric oh that's gonna save us but uh I don't know, maybe it's the fear of there is no transition from burning uh, oil to burning hemp, but the results are the opposite. With hemp, you don't get the filth and the waste, and you're probably going to get something. I'm not that technical. Maybe we could do some research into this, but no matter what you burn instead of uh, oil, you come out cleaner. Well, they got hydrogen, they've got, uh, uh, what else? It's available. Well, not available. But see, that that's what I mean. They're they're locking you into this electric shit, and uh, that's going to make you more of a slave in the long run to the game because you can't make your own. You can't work on it. You can't make your own source of electricity. You have to buy it from somebody. You can't just create it out of nothing. Tesla tried to say that we could. I think he proved we could. Westinghouse and the bankers had, uh, well, other ideas. So so we're stuck in this verbal argument about cheap and better than and all this other horse shit. And it doesn't really matter because what's going on has gone on for a long time. And what we're doing is projecting 10 years, 5, 10 years down the road. 10 years from now, I'm not going to give two flying fucks about an electric car. 69 years old. What the fuck would I care about an electric car? I'll be more interested in my chicken salad sandwich and some sex. (laughs) But that's a whole other story. I was being funny trying to make a joke about... Anyway. (sighs) So we've come to the point of... um, What do we do? We argue with each other about a a change that isn't here yet. It's in the works. 
<laughs> and the saddest part is they've had the answer the whole fucking time. Uh, Tesla is free energy. Then you just there's your there's your electricity. I'd be standing right behind. You don't need to generate. You don't need to make it from anything. It's there. You take it from the atmosphere. But here we are, all these intelligent, educated people, and most people don't believe in the first place. Oh, that's not true. Well, there you go. And I did see in that, in that oh, I wish I could have got a copy of that film I saw. It was an old DV, uh, VHS tape, so I, I don't know where to find this, but it was called uh, Tesla, Man at a Time. And there was an old video of a guy... And it was like brown and grainy, taking a, a light bulb about the size of a cantaloupe and inserting it into the dirt he was standing on and the light bulb came on. <laughs> it was amazing. Of course, trick photography and misrepresentation, blah, blah, blah. It's everywhere in every area of life. And I think I trust the Tesla information personally. So, there's my indoctrination. See, this is what I mean about my indoctrination. I'll kick the shit out of your indoctrination any old day. Yeah, but I think the difference between uh, mine and other people's in general is I didn't get told mine. <laughs> I, I lived some of mine. All not, It wasn't all just directed at me where I had to follow the directions and do it as I was told and get the certificate. And, man, I failed at all that stuff. I couldn't. I couldn't do sh shit. At the end, I couldn't be bothered with school. Oh, what a horrible place. So, instinctively, because I'm not, um, I'm not necessarily incapable, I wasn't interested. Uh, whatever they were doing didn't, didn't make me want to know what they were trying to show me. So, it didn't follow it. And, <laughs> as, as a, a result of computer school, I lasted like two nights. I said, wow, you're just not getting this. Maybe this school isn't for you. So I, I made a call to my dad and told him about it. And he said, well, can I buy you a computer and get you started? I mean, you can teach yourself. You usually do good like that. <laughs> Except with cars. <laughs> cars didn't do it. He said, pushing buttons sounds like it's right up your alley. But back in those days, this is, I was using it before I was ever considered uh, considering the Internet. I was using it for other purposes, printing and uh, being uh, artistic, I guess. So I did a newsletter with a friend of mine. Had a lot of fun doing uh, stuff on the Internet before, uh, uh, on the Internet, on the computer, before I got on, onto it in the after 2000, I, I started playing games in the two, early 2000s, but never took the internet seriously till I got to Scotland. Then it changed. Then I started to see uh, different things, different ways, from, a, I guess, another perspective. You know, I needed to be moved out of where I was to take a good, healthy look at where, it, you know, what it was that I was leaving behind. And like usual, it, it upset a lot of people about the decision I'd, I'd made to uh, stay in Scotland and, and help my mom. So, anyway, I did that for about two two and a half years, but the last six months I was just in the way. <laughs> I've, I've broken down and talked about this a few times. I try to not bore everybody with it. But, you know, it sounds like some big care hap, you know, carefree, happy life, but... During the life, there's been periods of time where other people, um, their stuff was like Cirque. Cirque's wants are way more important than my wants. I mean, if I wanted to live in L in L.A., I'd feel horrible taking her there. Because this is um, pretty much Danish, I guess, being some... I'm not like her, so I'm just assuming that being what you know what she is this is her home and this is what she loves and this is where she wants to be i was a adventurer i like to go see new shit check it out find out what's going to happen tomorrow well i gave all that up to do what i'm doing now <laughs> so there's uh 
it's not like a bad thing, you know. It was a trade-off. I was trading my freedom for a, a like, what do you, we call it? Like belonging, you know. When you feel like you belong somewhere or to something or to or with somebody, that that's the another one, you know. The solitude and the individual thing is wonderful. I enjoy the fuck out of it when it was me doing it. But now I'm in a different suit. You know, I've stepped out of that life and now I'm in a new life. So when I see other people upset about their life, that's what I don't get is why don't you pack up and go and do something different? It's not that damn hard. And I've heard all the excuses and I've given up all the shit in the middle because, uh, circumstances I roll with the changes in ways that most people find insane but mm, uh, <laughs> I guess that's why I do the radio down to uh, <coughs> you know to make a re- like Vinny says to make a record of what what's going on how I see what's going on how it affects me I don't think I affect anybody else. I think they just hear a voice and they either agree with it or they don't. Or they're entertained by it or they're not. One or the other. It's not life-changing. Nothing in life at this age is life-changing anymore for crying out. Well, no, I guess that's not true. I met Cirque at 54. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. Wow. Wow. Good hit. <laughs> Whoops. About swallowed the microphone on that one. Mm. Get me a shot of tea. Wow, that was a good hit. I f- sometimes I forget I'm on the radio. <coughs> and you know, just start token. Anyway. So we've been on a rant about the uh the arrogance of ignorance. Man. Wow. Can't get my voice to get... Let me drink a little more tea here. But that was written by Salamo on the reallibertymedia.com right now. The chat room. And, uh, yeah, we have some interesting um, disagreements. You know, I think... I'm trying to use the radio time for tonight is just because I voice my opinion there's no way my opinion trumps your opinion I'm not insane I'm just stubborn and I'm you know I see things the way I see them period I don't think you're any different whoever you are sorry about the coffin fit smoked a little too deeply on that but and it made my lungs go wackadoodle like like mary says oh here we go space flat from the 1980s wow i for one am not impressed with any of that all that inner planetary bullshit they're poisonous on earth and you guys are fucking worried about space travel we talk about a distraction does it get any easier i mean when i was a salesman one of the first things i think i was taught is when you can't dazzle them with brilliance baffle them with bullshit and it works too because most people don't they don't know what you're talking about. Getting them to admit they don't know what you're talking about. That's a whole nother story. But uh, lots of times, when I'm honest with people and I tell them, no, I, don't, I didn't know that. Eh, you go away, oh, Mr. Vinicus. Anyway, um, ah, boy, that complete lack. I had a brain fart when I read that. He said, shut the fuck up, Flash. We never disagree. Not really. I mean, personal shit, but um, the overall, the game and life and how things work or don't work. We we all, me and Vinny seem to, we click on a lot of that. But 
it's more the the social thing. Your indoctrination is so deep in right and wrong, and mine isn't. Mine, mine has an excuse for certain shit at certain times. And I don't mean like murder and rape or anything stupid like that. I mean bending rules or uh, doing things that that the the system does not want you to do, like not get inoculated. Some of these things, I'm all for them. If you don't want to be inoculated, why should you? Well, because the law says so. Well, like I spent five minutes explaining when they're giving you the fucking disease that you should have got when you were a child so that you don't get it. That's insanity. That's not preventative anything. Why don't I punch you in the nose and break your nose because someday you're going to have a broken nose. So I want you to just get it over with. I mean, that's what they're telling you in in a, well, in a, in a sort of, in a little bit of a way. They're just sneaky about it. And they make things so complicated that people don't understand that they don't need an education to understand something as simple as you might get sick. So, because you might get sick, I'm going to make you sick now so you don't get sick later. And they don't see the total insanity of that concept. I mean, what guarantees you're going to be here in 10 years to get the damn disease? Or what What I thought about was I didn't get measles. I think I had mumps or something like that. Uh, but uh, measles I never got. So, is my not getting the measles because I already am immune to the disease? <laughs> huh? Could that possibly be an answer to that question who is to know but these eggheads and teachers and doctors and lawyers and people in positions of power they've all decided for us and now they want to make it a law <sighs> wow anyway to those of you out there that think being given a needle to get sick so that you don't get sick is saying, wow, it's, it's going to be a long day, i tell you. But anyway, that's been 20% off for the 25th of April, 2019. And uh, thanks a lot again, Grimner, for getting my mic working. I don't know what the hell's going on with my system here. I, I don't think I've added anything on that should make my mic not work until you call me. <laughs> it's weird. Anyway, on the lineup, we've got, this is Thursday, so tomorrow, we got Wednesdays and Fridays at 7 o'clock. We got Graham Z in the rocket chair on the East Coast at 7 p.m. And on Friday night, you got Grimner and Moose Girl come with uh, Freaker's Ball. Last week, he did a Balls to the Wall. She was out partying. The Moose was on the loose out in the streets of Eau Claire. Saturday noon eastern time i do the dork table vinny's been showing up for it lately but i've had hostages and i've done them solo so who knows what's going to happen on saturday uh sunday we got the blues in the morning from grimner out on uh, in the new mexico in the morning i think it's well it's your morning do that until we man, play trivia and at 3 o'clock on the West Coast, Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, uh, 3 p.m. Uh, West Coast time. And then Monday night, 7 p.m. on the East Coast, Grimner does, yeah, thanks back, Grimner. Uh, Grimner does Grim Leftovers, because I did it wrong the first time I said it. I said Grims. <laughs> nah, he played on his own freaking name, smartass. Good move, mister. Oh, and the show's good, by the way. I really, your links are fun, and you are I'm been hanging in there with you since you started. So as long as you're going to play, you know, if you're going to do them, I'm going to replay them on Tuesday. It's my morning, it's like <laughs> my breakfast for my mind. <laughs> the crap that Grimner didn't get to on uh, on Friday from the Freakers Ball, he does it on Monday. And then Tuesday, me and Vinny have been paired up pretty regular doing the in a perfect world together lately 
and we've been debating everything from being a cop right along to uh, the do's and don'ts of packing your own parachute. So Tuesday night, at, or Tuesday, 1 o'clock on the East Coast on Tuesday, and then Wednesday, 7 p.m., Grammy on the Rocket Chair Podcast, 7 p.m., and then Thursday, I come back here, 2 p.m. on the East Coast and try this again. So there we go with the uh, the where's and the who's and the how's. We're out there in the world. People are hearing what we do on the Real Liberty Media. Uh, we got Hal Anthony, and we got Grammy, and we got Grim and Moose. So there's a few. There's always room for more people. There's plenty of airspace on here. That's why I took the shows I did, because there's so much time to fill. I figured, fuck, it, nobody's going to do it. I'll do something. I mean, it's not much, but... At least they give it a whirl, you know. And I try to uh, not do the same old, boring old shit, you know, over and over and over and over. So throw a little um, variety into this thing, like I tonight taking on, I reading somebody else's blog. And there's more blogs, so, and I'm not going to read them all first. I think I'll just open something next week and continue with the, uh, uh, maybe it won't be a theme, but something on that intellectual line you know where the arrogance of ignorance people need to learn what the fuck is going on and why we're doing it and uh you if you if your goal is to become wealthy and some you know special person nah then that's this isn't for you <laughs> see you later guys and thanks for hanging in here on the uh real liberty media with me at 20 percent off Roger Wilco, over and...